Tops Professional Journal Entry Import. This course will discuss the new Journal Entry Import feature. We will go over the import file format, import a file for journal entry, and post the journal entry batch from the imported file. The new journal entry import feature will allow you to import a comma delimited or CSV file into TOPS from which you can create a journal entry batch and then allow you to post that batch into TOPS. For the purposes of this course, we will be importing a payroll batch, but this feature can be used to import any type of journal entry. Let's begin by looking at a sample import file. The journal entry import file must have 11 columns and then as many rows of data as is needed for your journal entry. The first row of the file is your header row. This row is ignored by the software during the import. It is for your use so you know what information is in each column, which means the column names can be anything. Speaking of columns, let's go over each of them individually. The first column is the journal number. This column is not used by TOPS, but it must be in the file. The column is reserved for future use, but for now, all data in this column will be ignored by the software. The second column is the date column. This will be the posting date of the journal entry. The format of the date should be numerical, as is seen in this example. The year, though, can either be four digits as we see here, or two digits. TOPS will import it either way. When the journal entry batch is created, that date information will be located here. The third column is the description column. This description is used as the journal entry header description of the batch. When that batch is created, the description is filled in here. There is only one description per batch. Our fourth column is the account column. This is the general ledger account number that each line item will be coded to. This column may be blank in your spreadsheet, but you will still have to have the column and the column header name. These GL account numbers can be added in TOPS after the file has been imported. In our journal entry batch, this account number will display here. The fifth column is the reference column. This is used for the reference field on the individual line items and may be different for each line item. When the batch is created, the reference information for each line is displayed. The sixth and seventh columns are the debit amount and credit amount columns. These columns are where the dollar amounts for the line items will be. For each row, you can only have a number in either the debit amount or the credit amount column. You cannot have a number in both. You can have up to eight numbers before the decimal point and two numbers after. After the batch is created, the figures will be displayed in the appropriate debit or credit columns within the journal entry batch. Our eighth column is the reference ID column. This is an eight character code for this transaction. In the case of our example, it is the check number that was cut for each person's payroll. After the batch is created, that code is displayed in the reference ID column here. Our last three columns are like the first column. They're not used by the import program, but they are necessary for the import file. You must have header information in the first row, but any data that is in these columns in the other rows will be ignored by TOPS. Now that we've gone over the import file format, let's take a look at the actual import process. To begin, click on Utilities, then Journal Entry Import. This will open our Import Journal Entries window. Click on the magnifying glass icon to browse for the import file. Once you've located the correct file, click to select it, and then click Open. This will bring the import file into TOPS. You can see that it looks very similar to our Excel spreadsheets. You can also edit the imported information from this screen. As we stated previously, TOPS will accept the date format with either a four-digit or two-digit year. However, if you enter information that's in an invalid format, TOPS will let you know by highlighting that information in red. TOPS will do this for the date field, and the GL account number field. If you enter information in the wrong format in either the debit or credit amount fields, 
desktops will give you a pop-up notification, and the amount will revert back to what had been there previously. If you try to create your journal entry batch with invalid information displayed, TOPS will give you a pop-up notification advising that there is invalid data in some of the fields. In order to create our journal entry batch, we'll have to fix this invalid data. So we'll correct our date and our invalid GL account number. Clicking the View GL Accounts button will bring up a listing of our chart of accounts. There is a search function on this window that will allow you to search by account number. Just note that if you're using less than five digit account numbers in your chart of accounts, then you'll have to start your search with leading zeros. Once you've found the correct account, click on it to choose it, and then click the Select button. You cannot create the journal entry batch with no numbers in the GL account number column. So, if your import file does not include the GL account number, then you'll either have to use this process to add the account numbers, or type them in manually if you already know the correct numbers. Before creating our batch, I would like to point out that you can also delete rows of information from this window as well. Just select the row and click the Delete Row button. Once you're certain that everything is correct with your import file, click the Create Journal Entry Batch button. We then receive notification that journal batch number 003 has been created. The next step is to post that journal entry batch to our general ledger. To do that, we'll go to General Ledger, Journal Entries, and then click the drop down arrow next to batch number to find the batch that we just created. Now we'll double click on the batch to open it up. This first screen is our general batch information screen. Here, you can change the description, the reference ID, or choose to reverse this batch next period. You can also delete the batch if you decide not to complete the process after all. To view the batch details, click OK. You can see that all of the transactions from our import file are displayed here within our journal entry batch. You can still modify the data within the batch before posting. So, for example, I could change this GL account number using the standard GL account lookup function. Once we're certain that everything is correct, click Post, and then click Yes to post this journal entry batch. We are then notified that the posting of this journal entry batch is complete. Now let's take a look at one of our GL accounts to see what this transaction looks like. To do that, we'll click on View Accounts, and then enter the GL account number so we can see the transactions. This is our Employee Federal Withholdings account, and we can see that all of the information we imported for our five employees is displayed here, with our reference ID, which was the check number that was cut for their payroll, and the reference description, which is the name of our employee. Additionally, on a standard journal entry, your source ID would begin with GJ, which stands for General Journal Entry. When you import a journal entry batch, the source ID begins with IM, so you know that this transaction was imported. This completes our TOPS Professional Journal Entry Import course. Thank you.